to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is calling cloud flows from Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. So why is this important? And first off, before I uh, get too deep into the content, shout out to Cameron, who uh, him and I worked through this scenario earlier this week. So shout out to him for his involvement in uh, coming up with the solution here. Now, naturally, we do have built-in capabilities when we need to call a Power Automate desktop flow from a cloud flow. We've got the connector, we've got inputs, we've got outputs, and we can quite seamlessly transition context and data from the cloud to the ground, process it, then send a response back up to the cloud. But what happens if we want to do the opposite and we want to be able to call a cloud flow from a desktop flow? Now, the caveat here is, you know, in terms of why we'd want to do this is we might have a scenario where we don't want to return context back up to the cloud just yet. Um, because that what that would do is that would force us to log out of our active session, our RPA session, and then we wouldn't be able to pick up that session again. Uh, we would have to go ahead and repeat a bunch of different steps. Now, the use case here was really just around AI Builder and the ability to go ahead and use some OCR functionality. And so what we want to do is leverage AI Builder, leverage the out-of-box connectors that do exist so that we don't have to try to wire all of that up ourselves and as a result, make our lives more difficult inside of Power Automate Desktop. So naturally, Cloudflows do have an HTTP request trigger, so we can easily go ahead and call it using the invoke web service operation found in Power Automate Desktop. But as uh, we did experience, there are a few nuances to that, and certainly that's why I wanted to document this and, and show you folks how to go ahead and to do this. Now, this use case goes beyond just AI Builder. There's other connectors as well where we might want to take advantage of the connection experience and the out-of-box experience we get with dealing with different API schemas so that we don't have to figure out all of this stuff manually. This is part of the reason why Power Automate exists in the first place is to make connectivity simple. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here is leverage that capabilities, but just go ahead and call a subsequent cloud flow from a desktop flow. Now, so let's go ahead, let's talk about the demo. Let's see this live in action. As I mentioned, there's a few nuances that we're gonna to have to go through, and that's really the point of this video is to show you how to get around some of those nuances. Okay, so let's start in Power Automate Maker Portal, and we're gonna go ahead and develop a cloud flow. So here, it's a simple cloud flow. We're gonna expose an HTTP request. We will use the default post method and then what we're going to do is we're going to just create a very sample message body. So here I've just got file name and then the name of a file. And sort of the use case here would be we're going to pass in the name of a file or location of a file. We could then go ahead and use the file connector to pick it up from the desktop machine and then pass it over to AI Builder um, in that specific use case. Now, I'm not going to implement the AI Builder as that's not sort of the interesting part of this scenario. It's more about the mechanics of being able to go ahead and call this HTTP request. Now, from a response perspective, I do want to return some data. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a very simple message body. It's just going to have an output value, in this case, 30. We'll go ahead, we'll save this, and then what we can do is we can copy this specific post URL. Okay, so that's great. Let's now go transition over into Power Automate Desktop. Okay, so we're back in Power Automate Desktop. I do have a working example here which I've just gone ahead and disabled. Now we are going to go ahead and use the invoke web service action. So if we type for web we'll be able to go ahead and find it. Then we need to provide some parameters. So let's go ahead and let's paste in our URL from the Power Automate portal. Now if we click out of this field we're going to find out right away we've got an invalid value. Now the reason for this is we've got these percent signs here and it's actually percent to F. Now Naturally, inside of Power Automate Desktop, the percent sign is used to designate variables. So what's happening is it thinks that there's variables that are being included here, but in actuality, there's not. So let's go ahead, let's replace the percent to F, because that, what that is is really an encoded forward slash. And that's something that Power Automate, the cloud flows, is doing automatically. And that's why we see this invalid value. So let's go ahead, replace the last one, and just replace it with the forward slash and then if we click out of here perfect all good error disappears now 
I declared before that we were using a post method, so we can go ahead and use post. Now, we could also go ahead and use gets, but we would have to change that value inside of our Cloudflow. Now, we're gonna go ahead and use JSON. The default values here are application XML. And so naturally, when we get a response, we do want it to be JSON. So let's go ahead and just remove the XML. Let's put JSON instead. And then the content type, what is the content type we're gonna go ahead and pass in? And same thing, we're gonna use JSON here, not XML. So let's go ahead and let's get rid of that. Now, the next thing we need to do, since it's a post, we do need to provide a message box. So what we can just go ahead and do is, let's just copy this sample message that we've got here and let's take this data and let's put it in the request body itself. Now, we think life's good, but I'm gonna let this run because this will fail. Uh, I wanna show you what the error message looks like so that we can go ahead and naturally fix it. So let's go ahead, let's hit save, and then let's go ahead and let's run. Okay, so if we head over here, double click on our flow variables, we're going to see that we've got an error. Uh, if we basically scroll through this, we're gonna see that the request content is not valid and cannot be deserialized. Unexpected character encountered while parsing the value of percent sign, line zero, position zero. Okay, so what's going on here? So let's go back into our, our invoke web service action. Let's click on advanced. And then what we can do is disable this. So what's happening here is there's encoding that's going on that isn't necessary in our specific example. We don't need to go ahead and encode this data, we want it to be sent normally um, because it's valid JSON, we're gonna be able to process valid JSON, so no issue there. So let's go ahead, let's turn encode request body off, and then let's go ahead and click on save. If we go ahead and run it, life's good, right? So now we can go ahead and see that we've got an output value that of 30 that was sent. Let's head back to our Cloudflow take a look at our run history. And then sure enough, we can go ahead and see that we did receive a, an input where the file name was receipt. And then we did go ahead and re send a response back out. So there's a few, like I mentioned before, there's a few little nuances that uh, you need to go ahead and take care of inside of Power Automate Desktop. But once you know what those nuances are, it's quite easy to go ahead and to call this Cloudflow. Naturally, we could go ahead and include a bunch of different connectors here or other processing that may be required. Maybe we've got a custom connector and we could go ahead and now call that from our desktop flow and without losing context, right? Without having to log out of a machine and then log back into it and worry about persisting our state. Our state gets persisted because the orchestration now really happens inside of the desktop flow, not inside of the cloud flow itself. So that concludes today's demo. Hopefully you found that interesting and useful. I'm sure at some point in your journey here, you're going to want to leverage a Cloudflow to help out with some additional processing. And as a result, you're gonna run into those specific situations. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to go ahead and do so. You can find me at Weirzy. Obviously you're on YouTube. Thanks for watching, likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. So go ahead and take care of that. So thanks again for tuning into this content. We'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care. Later.